Hi everyone! Imagine you're the junior doctor in the emergency department when the paramedics bring a 30 year old male patient after a motorcycle accident. You and your team proceed to promptly stabilize and evaluate the patient. For the physical examination, you want to follow the ABCDE approach you learned during your training. Do you remember what this acronym stands for? Let's find out. The assessments start with an A that stands for airway and restriction of cervical spine motion. This patient's cervical spine is already protected by the cervical collar. This is important because a crash mechanism can potentially cause a cervical injury. Airway assessment entails looking for sign of obstruction and identifying mandibular or facial fracture. This is perceived by securing the airway with a jaw truss maneuver and suctioning any secretion or blood. Remember, it is extremely important to establish a definitive airway if there's any sign of a compromised airway. B. B stands for breathing and ventilation. This assessment focuses on the lungs, the chest wall, and diaphragm all necessary components for ventilation and gas exchange. First, visually inspect the neck, trachea, and chest wall for any alteration. Then, perform chest palpation, auscultation, and percussion. C. C stands for circulation and hemorrhage control. Assessments should aim at identifying source of bleeding, whether internal or external. Valuable information is gathered by examining the level of consciousness, the skin perfusion, and pulse. D. D stands for disability and aims at assessing the patient's neurological state. The Glasgow Coma Scale is a rapid, reliable, and objective method for determining the level of consciousness. In addition, Pupillary assessment allows identification of lateralization signs and cervical injury. Lastly, E stands for exposure and environment. This involves uncovering the patient to quickly assess all his body, followed by placing warm blankets to avoid hypothermia. Here we also assess the abdominal and pelvic cavity for signs of internal bleeding. Luckily, it seems like our patient doesn't have any major physical examination findings. However, because of his trauma mechanism, close surveillance and recognition of secondary lesions are granted. Like and share this video with your friends and comment below if you have any questions. Hope you have learned something new today and see you next time.